Therefore, it's now time for member statements. Member from Elgin Middlesex. Thank you very much, Speaker. Speaker, I'm pleased to rise today and celebrate Ontario's Doctors' Day. Doctors' Day was formally recognized in this House in 2011 to create a special day to recognize the hard work of our province's 29,000 practicing physicians. May 1st was chosen as Doctors' Days in Ontario to mark the birthday of Dr. Emily Stowe, Canada's first female practicing physician. She was born in Norwich Township, Oxford County, and graduated from New York Medical College for Women in 1867. She then opened her medical practice in Toronto. Every day, more than 320,000 patients across the province are treated and cared for by doctors. Whether it's in a hospital, a long-term care home, a clinic, or a patient's home, Ontario's doctors are making a positive difference in the lives of patients by providing high-quality care when and where it's needed most. To celebrate Doctors' Day in Ontario, the Ontario Medical Association invited elementary students and pediatric patients from across the province to send in drawings with personalized messages about what my doctor means to me. The response has been overwhelming. Over the past month, the Ontario Medical Association has received hundreds of submissions, ranging from entertaining to emotional, thanking doctors for their care, professionalism, and sacrifices made on behalf of their patients. It is important to recognize that doctors' contributions to our province are not limited to health care. Each physician's office, through overhead, contributes the equivalent of full -time four full-time jobs in the community, generates an average of $250,000 in GDP, and produces $50,000 in tax revenue for the municipal, provincial, and federal governments. Join me in celebrating the vital work that doctors perform every day to save lives and put patients first. On behalf of the PC Caucus, I would like to extend my warm wishes to Ontario's doctors. Thank you, Speaker. It's my pleasure today to rise to congratulate the Centre de Santé Communitaire Hamilton Niagara on celebrating 25 years of service this past weekend. Many dedicated volunteers were recognized for their commitment and their longtime service. The CSC is a community health centre in my riding, founded in 1991. They began as a social service centre, and it wasn't until 1995 that it began receiving federal dollars to provide a much-needed primary health care to Francophone communities in the Niagara region. Under the leadership of Marcel Castonguet, the centre takes a holistic approach to the delivery of programs. They focus on preventative care and health promotion by informing and educating. This is especially important in my riding because of the number of Francophone seniors and the challenges specific to them as a result of limited French services and low income levels. If you ask anyone around to see the centre grow to what it was today, uh, the names Marc uh, Yvan Giroux and Rosaire Lavoie would also be mentioned. They were the centre's pioneers, and they were able to pair the needs of our community with a dedicated long-term vision. I'm proud to have witnessed the growth of the centre in my community. I want to thank Marcel, the talented staff at the centre, and the many, many dedicated volunteers who all play an indispensable role in providing health care in our community. Thank you. you have a member statements. The member from Bruce Craven South. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. As a critic responsible for seniors and accessibility, I'm pleased to rise and recognize on behalf of our leader, Patrick Brown, and our Ontario PC Caucus that May is Speech and Hearing Month. Communication disorders can have a significant impact on our physical, emotional, social, and vocational well-being. It may prevent an individual from performing well at work, asking for help, hearing instructions at school, or even saying, I love you. Yet one in six Canadians suffers from a speech language or hearing problem. The good news is that half of all cases are preventable. So the earlier we can identify and treat it, the better the chances for the improvement and even recovery. This month is our opportunity to work to increase the importance of early detection and prevention of communication disorders, as well as to raise the public sensitivity to the challenges faced by people who are deaf or hard of hearing and break down barriers to help them reach their full academic and vocational potentials. I'd like to recognize members of the Ontario Association of Speech Language Pathologists and Audiologists, OSLA, for all of their work that they have done to promote communication health and to provide support to affected individuals and their families. Their advocacy efforts on removing barriers to communication advancing hearing health and promoting inclusion and equal access for people with speech and hearing problems to all aspects of life, counting employment, education, recreation, housing and social services, is commendable. Promoting communication health is an important cause, and I know that many of my colleagues in this legislature support it. I thank them very much for all the efforts in raising awareness about the importance of early detection and intervention in the treatment of communication disorders, and for doing what they can to champion the needs of people with communication disorders in Ontario. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well done. Thank you. Further member statements. The member from Oshawa. 
Thank you, Speaker. Today is May Day, recognized as International Workers' Day around the world. In Canada, we recognize Labor Day in September, and on April 28th, we mark the National Day of Mourning. Our local Labour Council, unions and community organizations gathered at our beautiful monument downtown to pay tribute to fallen and injured workers. This was the first year that all flags at public buildings were flown at half-staff, and I'd like to recognize and appreciate the bill brought forward by my colleague from Windsor-Tecumseh that passed last spring to make this the law in Ontario. No one should be injured or killed on the job. We should be seeing improvements and safer, more predictable, less precarious workplaces, whether they be offices, building work sites, hospitals, jails, classrooms, or other workplaces. We need to ensure workers have the safety equipment, job training, and mental health supports they need. We must enforce laws and regulations to make sure working Ontarians are safe. New Democrats support the Remember Westray campaign to call on the government and law enforcement to understand and enforce the Westray law. Employers who put their workers in jeopardy must be held responsible. Employers whose workers die on the job must be held responsible. We must respect and protect workers. More people deserve the protection of a union, and we need to make it easier for Ontarians to have that protection. And, Speaker, when workers are injured, they deserve fair compensation and support. We have to fight to put dignity back in our compensation system. The day of mourning is not only for workers in the trade union family, it is for every worker who goes to work and has the right to come home safely. We will remember the dead, but we must continue to diligently fight for the living. Thank you for the member statements. Member statements, the member from Perth Wellington. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Speaker, today I want to pay tribute to my necktie, <laughs> or rather the pattern on my necktie, which is none other than the Perth County Tartan. This beautiful tartan was unveiled by Perth County Council on April 6, in celebration of Canada's 150th anniversary. It re represents the county's Scottish heritage, and its colours reflect the past and present of Perth County. The shades of green represent agriculture, while blue represents our rivers and streams. The red is for the blood sacrificed by the early settlers who tamed this wild land and of the veterans who laid down their lives to protect our freedom. Gold stands for the industrious nature of the people of Perth County. I'd like to recognize everyone involved in creating this tartan, especially councillors Helen Dowd, Doug Kellum, and Bob Willem, and committee member Pauline Hartfeld. Their work represents the very best of the county and its people. With hard work and dedication to our communities, I know the county's best days are still to come. Thank you, Speaker. Well done. Thank you. Further member statements? Further member statements? The member from Lambton, Kent Middlesex. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. I wish to recognize an event held annually in my riding of Lambton, Kent, Middlesex, which raises money to make important and significant contributions to ease the financial burden on families living with cancer. In Strathroy on April 22nd, the seventh annual Casino Strathroyal was held. With my wife, Kate, I was pleased to be among the nearly 1,000 participants at the Scala occasion. This is a lively event which combines a superb dinner with live entertainment and casino games. Casino Strathroyal was begun by Dr. Tyler Damon after his own battle with melanoma cancer during 2006-2007. He understands and knows firsthand the struggle and hardships that families experience while supporting their loved ones through an illness. Throughout the year, residents of Strathroy Caradoc are invited to nominate worthy recipients, and a committee selects 10 names to receive support. After expenses, all the funds raised from Casino Strathroyal go directly into the hands of local families living with cancer. Last year, $64,000 was distributed to 10 recipients. While the final accounting for 2017 is yet to be made, the total is expected to be even greater this year. Speaker, I am pleased to recognize the work of Dr. Tyler Damon, his family, the many generous local sponsors, and all those who support Casino Strathroyal in this cause of helping victims of cancer in Strathroy Caradoc. Thank you. Well, thank you. I thank all members for their statements.